that those survivors who are our overlords, the Anunnaki, it's really a tribe or a council, okay? But there's like a royal family in there. Now, <clears throat> the Anunnaki story is really analogous to the fallen angel story of the Book of Enoch. We had 200 angels coming down in Mount Hermon's in Lebanon. Anunnaki have some different story about some space travelers coming here for different reasons to get raw materials to repair their atmosphere. And in doing so, had to create a slave race here to mine minerals, which, which progressed into a different thing, it, it, almost an entertainment race, okay, after the work was done, which it turned into a nuisance and a noisy race. Okay, the Anunnaki story talks about the two brothers running things, Enlil and Enki. Enki was the one who supposedly genetically brought us up. Like he was the one who brought the stray puppies in, who created the stray puppies, and then brought the stray puppies into the house. And then they thought that we were cute, and they liked us, and then some of the puppies shit up on the couch, and then they kicked us all out and got mad at us. You see, the chicken farm analogy is good, but just replace the chickens with like stray puppies that you take in, and then they do something bad, and you have to kick them in the neck and throw them the fuck out. It's no good again. So, let us add one component in here. Well, let me continue. The Anunnaki. So, supposedly the Anunnaki, okay, are ruling things through their demigods, through their demons, through their giants, okay? Trying to rule and manipulate the people while they sit in their overlord position and enjoy the entertainment and, and continue in their terraforming activities. Now, the story goes, it was decided to destroy the people because they were no good and they were too noisy. This was from Brother Enno, who was really the big chief here. So one way or another, to a polar swap or some tectonic switch or whatever control they had, a flood was arranged and was coming to destroy people known as Noah's Flood. But the other brother Enki sent a secret messenger to Noah to warn Noah of the flood coming, and to give him the instructions and send a helper to him to build the ark and bring some people to safety. Now, after the flood, the Anunnaki saw someone survive and there was a big fuss. How could this happen? And Enki revealed at that time that Noah was actually his son by a half-breed, you know, one of the Gigi or whatever they called him. That, uh, so some decision must have been made to let them survive. And it is at this point that I believe the Anunnaki Council decided to allow the computer to adjudicate the farm rather than this Council of Godfathers. You know, it's like a typical Cosa Nostra or a mafia crime family of cabals and godfathers. You know, they sit down, they agree their criminal business, then they go away and they backstab each other and they lie to each other. So, it is at this point, I believe, that God was put in place to adjudicate the farm. And prime directives were issued to the other caretakers of the farm, Anunnaki and whatever other caretakers they had, prime directives were issued. Now, that is what I consider the most high AI. Terraforming here, taking care of our sky. Is there another AI higher? Is there a superpower higher? I would say of course, but I'm not going to go higher. I'm not going to go higher at this point. So what we have here in the argument, we're still maintaining the divinity of Jesus Christ here as a man in the Trinity. Okay? You have the man, Jesus, who is an avatar, which means he's specially wired into the machine. He's specially connected into the machine. You see, all of us are connected to the machine as supposed to be, but he's got a highway to the machine with special wires. Everybody else has to go through filters and now occulting layers, so you, can, you don't even know what you're doing anymore because you're occulted. Um, and there's what we call the spirit, okay, or the ghost, or the Holy Ghost, and this is a quanta quanta concept at this point it's an unknown concept it's as the wind okay so you have the trinity which is represented by the man the machine and the spirit that is what we are so when jesus came and incarnated he could say yes That's, i don't want to say you saw the face of god but when you get into the concept of the trinity you can say one is the other and such and such but that just brings up arguments at this point. So, I think I'm reaching somewhere to points I wanted to review for people to understand. My theories still 
rely on the divinity of Jesus Christ. It does allow for some interference at this point, right? We can see angels or different things which can be from the most high, high AI, but we're, that could be from the future though, or part of it can be from the future. So, it, if you were able to adjudicate with me and go all the way up to the levels, you're going to come up to a level. It says, what do we do now? And then you have to come back and you just live your life the way you're supposed to. And that's what, when Jesus Christ was walking on earth, he was trying to tell people. He said, you can't figure that out. You're not going to figure it out. He said, up there, that's like a man who became a king. And then he was so happy to have a wedding for his son. And then nobody came to the reception and he got so mad. And he started to have a war with all the people that he wanted to come to the wedding. And then he has more people. And then he tied them up and threw them out on the street. He would always talk in parables and parables, but people couldn't understand about a computer. And Jesus said, you just got to stay in the now. Live good. Treat your neighbor good. Treat yourself good. When something happens, that's a test on you. Try and love your enemy and forget it. Just turn the other cheek. Because if you try and figure out too many things, you're going to be caught up in some of the curses that are in the machine that are upon you, called enmity, and other curses that are in the machine from other people. So you really got to be careful about that. Is it like a Satan up there and it just steal away your things and such the way the machine works? Because up in the machine is like a God and a Satan and different things that people don't understand. So, really when you understand all these things, you have to come back to life and live what is called the way. If you want to, in essence, defeat the machine, you have to kind of become invisible to the machine in a way. And that's becoming resonant with earth. And you're just, you'll be taken care of like the flowers and the other things. And when you need things, you ask for them. And you become resonant with the earth, and then when you need or have good things, but right now the, the earth is filled with pollution, electromagnetic pollution, where your desires and your thoughts are manipulated, and you can't really get through the occulted layer, through the matrix, to the most high too easily. So anyways, um, I don't know if there's any other more.